high on the woodpecker today. I temporarily remove my new drum sander speed controller because I made one with no display. The controller I showed you last week works like a charm. I use my sander more often since I've made it. But since I built it, I made some modifications. I know it's not that obvious, but I made it eight months ago. Yes, last September. I thought that maybe a LCD display might be too much. So a month ago, I made this Android app to replace the display with all the buttons and the readings. But to make a woodworking video, I'm going to make a box so I can show you how the app works. First thing first, I need something to hold the box to the motor. For that, I use some scrap plywood that I roughly cut straight. Next, I make sure I have a uh, somehow straight surface so I can cut the other side straight on the table saw. With one side straight, I can move the rip fence a bit and cut the other side. After tracing the shape of the motor, I cut this in two. Now it's time to cut two half circles. Finally, cut the ends. I also need to make a box. I begin by cutting some thin plywood. I'm going to make box joints for the box. So I need to cut them out. When I'm done, I glue the box together. <laughs> this is not too difficult. But in the end, I make sure the box is square and leave this alone for a while. While the glue dries, I can start to work on the bottom of the box. I begin by drilling a hole for the stepper motor. Ah, but the motor is not completely round. I fix this. And here it is. The glue of the box is now dry, but it's not at all at the same height. I fix this. Then I can glue the bottom. A little bit of glue, a bottom, and a bit of weight. While the glue dries, I turn the pulley for the stepper motor. When I have a nice cylinder, I drill a hole in the center to the size of the stepper's motor's shaft. When I'm done, I put it in place and add a bit of glue, just to be on the safe side. Now I'm ready for my new controller. I remove the other one and check if my new box holder will fit. Ah, perfect. I'll just need to drill some holes so I'll be able to screw both pieces together. Done. Now I can check this. And even with the box itself. This will be perfect. I just need to drill some holes for the electrical wires. And more holes so I'll be able to screw the box to the support. A bit of glue and I can screw this. While the glue dries, I can begin to work on the lid. First thing is to cut it to size. But to screw the lid in place, I need to glue two strips of wood. And if I wanted a smiley face on my lid, <laughs> well, I'd be done right now. But since it's not really what I want, I go to the computer and make the design for my lid. This is what I want. I just need to carve this. And in less than 9 minutes, it's done. 
but to make it pop more, I paint the carving black. When the paint is dry, I can screw the lid to the box. <laughs> when I'm sure the lid won't move, I remove the unwanted paint and also remove the excess around the lid. I'm almost done with my box. I knock off the corners and drill one final hole. Now I can start to work on the electrical hookup. When the plugs are at the end of each wire, I can insert them into their hole. Then make the electrical hookup inside the box. Ah, it's quite simple. I put every wire of the same color together and over the black wire, I put the current sensor. Then I can hook everything to the Arduino. The current sensor, the Bluetooth module, and the stepping motor. I bend the LED wire and put everything inside the box. Now it's time for the final installation. <laughs> Not too complicated. I plug in the power, screw both half circles to the motor with the belt at the right tension, <laughs> and I'm done. And here it is. Without the push buttons of my other controller, I can vary the feed rate speed. My last hole was for the LED. When it flashes quickly, it means that the speed is fast. The flashing speed varies according to the speed. Since everything is working fine, I can put the LED in place. And now with the Android apps I made, I can control everything like before. Here it's more obvious. When the sending motor draws more current, the current meter goes up and the speed goes down by itself. Yeah, in fact, it's the same as before, but without any display or buttons. If you want a bit more information on the circuitries and the programming, you can go to my website. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.